Today we are talking about three things that fit together in a strange way that is actually very interesting. That is the world's finals, one specific game, magical penetration and protection reduction, and the upcoming item changes for season 6. In order to understand why these all work together and fit together, let's start at the beginning. And the beginning in this case is game 2 of the world's finals of Splice vs Team Rival. A lot of people that have talked about these games frequently mention that Sinos Najar should have been banned. Maybe, maybe not, but I think in this game he was not the deciding factor and more of a supplement to what the rest of the team comp was. That is of course not to diminish his role in this game and there's a reason why Naja functions very well here, but I believe that there was a lot more to the comp that was a lot more important and very little attention paid to than Naja on its own as a pick. I think this would have worked with another assassin as well. And that is what we can see here in the rest of the picks, or more specifically in the items of the rest of the picks. If you look closely at these items, you will maybe already notice something. Literally every single magical character on this team has an item that provides the team with magical protection reduction. For Gab, that is Voidstone, for Agni, that is Spear of the Magus, for Atio, that is Stone of Binding, and for Freya, that is Demonic Grip. Outside of that, we also see multiple penetration items here, two obsidian shards on Freya and Agni, Agni also with a divine rune, and Freya also with penetration boots. And this is very, very interesting. I've been toying around with the thought of reduction comps for a while, but it's something that's very hard to execute on a casual level or anywhere really, because no one really wants to play that. And that is because there is a stigma to it. Normally, you do not want to have four characters of the same type of damage. You don't want to have four magicals or four physicals on your team. And there's a good reason for that. Normally, it makes it way easier for the enemy team to counterbuild, as you just have to focus on one type of protection primarily, as long as you can deal with that one damage dealer of the other kind. As such, it also doesn't seem logical that you would put Naja as a physical in this comp, because that's a physical that can be focused down relatively easily compared to others, meaning the risk of not having physical damage is much higher. And it still worked. I'm gonna show you a quick clip here and I want you to pay special attention to Kalas. Kalas at this point is level 17, the enemy team is a little bit higher overall, but not to a massive degree considering that Kalas has a two and a half magical defense item and extra health on top of that. Just look what happens to him. Splice, Splice! Kalos will be the first one back, Deathwalker on the way. Everybody here from Splice already, and the Fire Giant's already down! There's damage from Maswa, meanwhile, uh -oh. one goes up thanks to Sinoshore, down! Now of course there are more factors than just the build that come into play here. There's the fact that one team has Fire Giant, has a few levels lead, but the important part that I think is really worth noting here is that Kalos gets the protection reduction applied from both Gab and Artio before the fight starts, or one at this case is still a penetration addition, and then Freya comes in and basically almost insta-bursts him. And that is on a tank character that has spills specifically against magical damage, and he's not taking any physical damage in that entire fight, as Naja is busy with Shang Kui. Of course, we also can't completely leave out that Freya was in a very, very strong state at the time and has received nerfs since. So yes, again, it's not the perfect situation to show how strong all these builds are, but it gets you a better picture than most other things will. And it's something that kind of happened throughout the entire game and the issue was obviously bigger for other targets that had less magical protection to begin with. In fact, every single member of Rival had built an item that provides a decent amount of magical protection. But the question is really if it mattered at that point at all. Before we look at the numbers in detail, let's quickly talk about protection reduction. So protection reduction is an interesting stat because it doesn't have a cap. It is independent of the penetration cap as it reduces the enemy protections directly. As long as the enemies have protections, they will be reduced. On the physical side of things, we have three items that can do that. The Executioner, Stonecutting Sword and Void Shield. Executioner does up to 36% protection reduction. Stonecutting Sword can get up to 30 flat protection reduction. Void Shield applies 20 flat protection reduction. Technically, there's also the Void buff, the protection reduction buff, the purple buff, that reduces protections by a further 10. So the maximum you can get is 36% reduction with an additional 60 flat reduction, which is already more than you can get in penetration. Your penetration cap is 50. It's not quite that easy though. 
With a very few notable exceptions, you can't fit all of these items on a character that realistically works well. You can maybe do it on Vamana or on Erlang Shen in some situations, but it's already a risky build. Also, while Executioner as a Hunter and Void Shield as a tank are relatively easy to apply, Stonecutting Sword is one of those more risky items where you have to be really close to the enemy and consistently hit them to get the full effect out of it. So yeah, you can get a reasonable amount of physical protection reduction, but around 100-ish you won't really be able to reach more. At that point you can obviously still slap on pen and that's a different story. But let's look at the magical side of things now that we have a bit of a perspective. So the base magical protection for a character in Smite at level 20 is 48. Not as high as physical protection, which is typically more around 60-ish, so that's already a benefit. Also, magical protection is generally something you want to build less into in regards to the map. There are a lot of objectives and things on the map that do physical damage, so you will take less magical damage throughout the game in general, meaning that physical protection benefits you a little bit more too. Now, if we just add the items that we have here from the Steam comp that we're talking about, and just add the flat reduction, ignoring demonic grip. So a fully stacked Spear of the Magus, Stone of Binding and Void Stone. That's 20 for Void Stone, 50 for Spear of the Magus, which is hard to stack to be fair, and 15 for Stone of Binding, which brings us to a total of 85 magical penetration. So the protection reduction here is almost, but not quite twice as much as the base value that you have at level 20. Meaning even if you build a magical protection item, it's kind of halfway lost, I guess. Again, this is assuming full stacks of Spear of the Magus, which is not very realistic, but also leaving some other things out. But this gives you a bit of a grasp where we're laying just with the flat values. And now we add in Demonic Grip. And we create a long list of what will happen. So we start with a base protection of 48, then just go up in increments of 20. Around like 108-ish is where you would have your first magical defense item, like for example Talisman of Energy, then 168 would be two magical defense items, and 228 or 248, depending on what you're building, would be three magical defense items. These spots are marked here on the table, that's the target's protection. And now we see how much protection is left after we apply various effects from protection reduction. The first one is Demonic Grip, and that makes the table look like this. We take a 36% of all of the protections here. Then afterwards we add Void Stone. What we can see here is that a target that had 48 protections prior already is down to 11 protections, so almost true damage. And that means both your base damage as well as your scaling damage will be higher. It affects both, and that's a nice thing about protection reduction or penetration. And then we add Another item, which is Stone of Binding with a proc, which is an additional 15 penetration at the moment, but will be protection reduction after the change in the 6.1 patch. Now we're at minus four protections, or if you have 68 protections with already more than Magi's Blessing, then you have nine protections now. So with Magi's, you have pretty much nothing as well. And you can see how heavy the values are even hit towards the top end. Even with three magical defense items, you already lose half of your magical protection. Now, let's add in Spear of the Magus, just for the hypothetical idea of seeing how much we can get out of that. Don't worry, we have enough other factors that come in afterwards if Spear of the Magus wouldn't be the one that applies here. Now, all the way down to 128 protections, will you end up with no protections at all. So if you build a magical defense item, literally it wouldn't matter. And this is just the protection reduction from Spear of the Magus, by the way. Now, what if we add in the penetration from Spear of the Magus? Well, it gets worse, of course. We are at a point where we can have two magical defense items and only eight protections are left after everything's done. But we're not done. We can also add in the penetration from, for example, Divine Ruin, which Agni had here. In which case, even that would end up in a negative value and it really have to have more than 200 magical protections to have any remotely noticeable magical protection left. Hypothetically, we could go even further because you can build up to 50 penetration in a game. Because, for example, it'll build pen boots and then maybe another pen item. And it goes on. We are at a point where three magical defense items gives you 11 magical protection. And then if you add the void buff, the purple buff to that, even that doesn't give you any protection anymore. 
If you were to stack all these reduction items and all these penetration items, you could literally have a target with basically no protections, even if they stack heavy magical defense. And that is a bit crazy to me. Now, of course, you won't stack all of this all of the time. The one item that really stands out here that you won't always have is Spear of the Magus. And you will not have all stacks of that at least. Maybe you'll have two stacks, three stacks, but often after that the target is already dead or they can get away or something. But the rest of this stuff is surprisingly easy to apply. A quick basic attacking guard, which pretty much all mage ADCs are, like Freya, like Sol, like Kronos, or technically even Ao Kuang, will be able to apply the demonic reduction very, very quickly and get a lot out of that. The rest is just being close to the enemy, hitting some CC, and hitting them with an ability in general. You can always take two or three protection reduction things out of the equation here, and you will still end up with somebody having to build more than two magical defense items to have any magical protection at all. The biggest struggle with that really is finding both a mage that you can fit your demonic grip on and another mage that you can fit Spear of the Magus on, unless you're playing Ao Kuang and you can actually use both. I think the fact that there's essentially no cap here for the protection reduction is problematic to some degree. Penetration has a cap for a good reason, but for some reason for protection reduction, which we got more and more and more of, this doesn't apply and I have a feeling it's just a relic of the past that there was never any cap for that added to the game. And looking at some of the items that are receiving changes, this could become a bigger problem. For example, on Freya we saw a Celestial Legion Helm in the SPL in this very game. Now Celestial Legion Helm is excellent against physical damage and for now it will probably be the better choice. But Dynasty Plate Helm is receiving a buff, upping the power of the item to 55. And different from Celestial Legion Helm, Dynasty Plate Helm comes with 10 penetration. It otherwise has a similar purpose for a cheaper price, does it a bit quicker, and then not as efficient. And I have a feeling that Celestial will eventually get nerfs. And when that happens, Dynasty will be more effective, making it easier to get a lot more flat pen again for basically free. And likewise, Stone of Binding is receiving this change that makes it protection reduction as well. So beforehand, you could eventually kind of run out of pen because you already have your 50 pen and you have the Stone of Binding factored in. Now it's protection reduction, so again, it's not affected by any cap. And it also gets a 10 power increase, making it a more valuable pickup. And outside of all these values that I just showed you here that already are ridiculous enough in themselves, there is more to talk about that I intentionally left till the end because it's not as generally applicable. In this particular team comp, we also had an RTO. An RTO also has up to 16% extra protection reduction through her abilities. Now this depends on how long she's hammering down on an enemy basically, so you won't always have all of that. But again, it's extra percentage reduction, which can be even more impactful. It is part of the reason that makes Artio so strong in these matchups, along with the fact that she can work so well with Stone of Binding compared to other characters. So you aren't even at the end of what you can reach in terms of reduction. And after that, you still have more. Both the Agni and the Freya also built Obsidian Shard. And this is for a good reason. This is to overcome the lack of damage on your earlier hits. Because in a fight you will start off uh, with some hits that will not have the full protection reduction stacks yet. And in that moment Obsidian Shard gives you more damage because you will be able to have that penetration against anyone. And after a few hits it doesn't matter as much anymore. But the Obsidian Shard is also getting a change, but this change in this context especially is a buff, because now it has 70 power, meaning in late game, where you will typically build this in this particular uh, team comp and in this particular strategy, you will get more power from this item as well, meaning you get more damage overall. And the whole point of this generally being more interesting is also the fact that we have an extra slot in our builds. And this extra slot will typically probably be used for either more crit for some characters or for protection items to be a little bit more safe. But if you go with this route, then you can simply go into even more penetration for your team and that way you don't have to care about the enemy having an extra way to keep themselves safe because they won't have any realistically noticeable protections in the first place and they may also have to opt in a magical defense item earlier. So yeah, despite all the other item changes, I think these ones are the ones that should definitely be discussed and thought about and maybe just 
get a cap for protection reduction of some sort. I'm also going to throw a quick shot of other magical pen on items in here, just to have an overview of where you can get the rest of the pen from. Also, not very hard, especially with Spear of the Magus already giving you 15 flat pen. As such, those small changes that are going to happen in Season 6 may actually be a little bit more concerning in the context of which item this affects. And with that, we've covered SPL, penetration and item changes, and I hope this was interesting, insightful and gave you a good overview. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe to the subscribe button and also a quick shout out to my current sponsors, Kenny Olsen, Arawas, The Edgy Potatoes Edgy, Richard Thompson, Jado85, Xerobos, FroDelG Gaming, Tsim3N or Simchin, and The Walden Twin. See you for the next one tomorrow. Dick Sloth, out.